Shamar, I'll let you take it away. Tell us how we're gonna how we're gonna do this. Create robust AI agents. Awesome. Thank you, JP. Uh, yeah, very nice to be here. And uh, thanks, everybody, for attending this awesome conference. Um, so let me share my screen. And I want to actually talk about model context protocol, which everybody's been kind of like talking about the last few uh, months. But I want to share a couple of like really foundational things that I think it enables that uh, we currently don't have in our Discord moment. So I'm going to just share my screen real quick. Um, let me know if, uh, with a thumbs up if you can see my screen, JP. Uh, awesome. Cool. So um, I think uh, just step, taking a step back and just thinking about the use cases for AI agents especially, uh, it, ever since kind of chat GPT came out, uh, there's been this dream of connecting LLMs to unstructured data sources, to APIs and tools within an organization uh, in order to perform actions and tasks. You know, and we kind of talked about large action models uh, just before. Uh, and so like really for AI to be operable, uh, it needs to connect to the world around it. Uh, but unfortunately, as everybody's kind of been seeing so far, a lot of these high uh, impact uh, use cases have been kind of stuck in POC purgatory for a while. And uh, these use cases may be things like workflow automation, information retrieval, data processing of unstructured data and so forth. But I think things are actually changing uh, really drastically this year that make a lot of these use cases possible for robust kind of like agent application development. Uh, and I wanna cover uh, especially MCP, but also just generally like some of the trends we are seeing. So the first thing is the models themselves are getting way better. Um, and so we have reasoning models now, which kind of do a lot of the complex work uh, at inference time with test time compute that used to happen uh, at the framework layer. So for example, you know, there's React and chain of thought reasoning and tree of thought and like all these other kind of uh, uh, algorithms that people developed uh, to help LLMs reason better. A lot of that stuff is now actually happening at the inference time for reasoning models today. And so you can kind of simplify a lot of this complexity that used to exist when you were building an application uh, by just trusting the models more. Uh, and then the second thing that's happened that's really important is actually this uh, standardization that's happened from that model context protocol. Uh, and that uh, standardization is basically a way of uh, giving a standard API for LLMs to connect to tools, to data, to external systems uh, without having to like re-implement it as you onboard new APIs and new uh, services for your application. And the last thing is actually trust and safety. We'll cover that in a, uh, towards the end if there's uh, time left, but there are also better techniques for AI evaluation. And you can check out our company's website to kind of see uh, how we can leverage small language models and fine tune them. Uh, to understand a particular application or agent and uh, and learn a metric, an evaluation metric uh, for that specific application. Um, so the thing that uh, I really wanna double click on today is this project that we have open source called MCP Agent, uh, which is a very simple uh, library that allows you to build uh, AI agents using MCP servers. And so it's basically uh, the bet we're taking is that the whole world is going to be MCP native pretty soon. Different services are going to expose themselves as MCP servers, and different line of business applications are going to become MCP native clients. And that's already happening with, you know, there's a GitHub MCP servers to interact with GitHub. And then there's also MCP clients like Claude and Cursor and VS Code that allow you to use those servers to build, um, to basically do uh, agentic workflows. Uh, so the key observations we have are, that MCP is basically going to be everywhere. Even I think at Microsoft Build uh, this week, they announced that even Windows is going to have an MCP native like layer at the operating system, which is pretty cool. Um, but then there's like a couple of things that I don't think we've uh, really scratched the surface of yet, which I think are even more transformative than what people are giving MCP credit for. Uh, the first one is actually MCP uh, agents can be exposed as servers themselves to allow uh, uh, multi-agent interaction. Uh, across the same MCP protocol. And I'll show a demo of this in a bit as well. And then the third thing is uh, workflows and workflow patterns for how you build effective agents uh, should be pretty composable. And uh, they should be, there's a very popular blog post from Anthropic called Building Effective Agents that came out at the beginning of this year. And so what MCP agent does is it combines all of those patterns that were defined in that blog post 
and gives an implementation of them in a way that you can actually like uh, build more sophisticated workflows from the same building blocks. Uh, and the building blocks are pretty simple. Like in the simplest case, it's an augmented LLM where an LLM is connected to tools, to data, like memory or resources. Uh, and all of that interaction is done via the MCP protocol. And then the agent just, LLM just runs in a loop. It's given a task. It calls the tools, it retrieves the data, it does its thing until it accomplishes the objective. So this is like the simplest kind of agent you can think about. Then you have like more complex workflows that build on top of this. So in this case, there is an evaluator optimizer where uh, you have two LLMs that are interacting with each other. Uh, one of them is uh, calling uh, like the generate function to generate a response. And the second one is an evaluator, which is basically evaluating the quality of that response and giving feedback to the generator LLM. Uh, and this runs in a loop until basically the evaluator is happy with the response that the generator produced, and then you return the result to the user. Uh, and again, the generator and the evaluator could be a more a, a, a more complex workflow. Like each of them could be making tool calls, could be con connecting to different data sources, et cetera. So it's not just a single LLM call, it's basically like an agent uh, that, that uh, you, in, in, you integrate in here. Um, then there's like another pattern called parallel workflow, which is for people familiar with distributed systems, it's just like a fan out of an input going to multiple agents uh, in parallel. And then once all of those agents complete their uh, objective, then an aggregator basically fans in all of their agent responses and synthesizes them into a single output to return. So from the user's perspective, it may still be like an input to an output, but under the covers, it's actually like invoking multiple agents, uh, awaiting their responses, and then uh, synthesizing them back uh, as a single response at the end. Uh, and I'll actually give an example of perhaps the most complex of those patterns, which is this um, orchestrator worker. And in this case, you may give uh, a very complex, like open-ended task. Uh, and then you give one LLM, which is the orchestrator or the planner, the task of figuring out uh, what the order of operations is, what the plan should be to execute uh, 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 the different agents with. Uh, similar to this workflow, except in this case, a programmer or a developer like decided which agents to invoke. But in this case, you're letting an LLM kind of on the fly dy dynamically determine what are the right agent invocations to have. And then at the end, it like synthesizes all of that and uh, returns a response to the user. Uh, I'll Don't take a look too much at the code here. I'll actually show this um, uh, when I do a demo in a sec. So one of the things that you already see from a lot of this is agents are complicated, right? They're like long running tasks. They may be paused, resumed, retried. There may be a human in the loop in some of those cases. They may be making multiple tool calls, connecting to multiple MCP servers. And so really the right way to think about them are uh, agents are actually like async workflows. Uh, and so basically the same principles that applied in distributed systems for workflow orchestration apply to AI agents. And you're starting to see that with a lot of the products that are coming out today. Like there is, you know, uh, there's deep research, there's operator from OpenAI. There are a couple of these things that basically take like tens of minutes to do their job. Uh, and they're basically executing somewhere in the back end asynchronously. And the second thing that I really want to point out is today, if you think of like how MCP is integrated, the client side is uh, and is basically the agent, right? So you have a Claude desktop app. It connects to MCP servers, and then you give it a task, and the Claude uh, desktop app is then figuring out how to invoke those servers and do some like accomplish your task. So basically, the MCP client is the agent in that case. We actually want to flip that paradigm. We, an MCP agent, allow you to create agent applications and expose them as MCP servers themselves. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to basically have multi-agent collaboration across the same base MCP protocol. And it also allows you to build your own agents and use them in any MCP client. So for example, uh, I'll uh, actually just demo this right now, but you can uh, basically create an agent workflow. You can uh, uh, then expose that as an MCP server, and then you can use that in Claude and Cursor and any MCP compatible client. Uh, and even more importantly, you can actually run those workflows that I just showed you in like dedicated infrastructure, not just running client side, but even in your own hosted environment uh, if you're deploying these to production. So let me actually put all of this together to show you what all of this actually looks like. Uh, so one of the things I wanna show you is a 
is uh, the workflow aspect of, of it. Here we use Temporal for orchestrating uh, uh, all of these things. So you'll actually see there is all these uh, workflow steps that happen to accomplish a task. In this case, I have uh, this workflow called the orchestrator workflow, and it's a fairly simple uh, task. It basically uh, is supposed to help you uh, help us uh, grade a student's short story. Uh, so it sounds simple, but then the task is load the student's short story from this markdown file, and then generate a report for proofreading, logical consistency, style adherence. For style, use the style guide from this URL, and then finally write the graded report to this markdown file. So it's a lot of steps and the orchestrator basically is given access to these individual agents. Each of these agents can connect to different MCP servers. Uh, and then the orchestrator has a planner which basically figures out how to use these agents uh, to accomplish the task that was given. Now, the cool thing is this, this whole workflow is like exposed as uh, this MCP uh, agent workflow application. And I can run this uh, from anywhere using, uh, using MCP agent. Uh, and so in this case, I can like run it from the CLI. And what you'll see happen here is the execution here is going to happen in a workflow orchestration backend. In this case, it's temporal. And the first thing it will do is it will figure out what's the plan that it should generate and uh, like what should it, what should the application actually do uh, and how should it orchestrate all of it. And then it takes a minute or two and like it basically calls the right agents, it's calling different uh, MCP servers, it's doing everything necessary to complete the task, but it's, and it, but like tasks may fail, they may be retried, they may, this workflow may pause for a human in the loop. And so all of this is like happening asynchronously behind the scenes. But the cool thing is this agent can actually be exposed as an MCP server here. And so uh, this is MCP inspector for folks who have built MCP servers. Uh, you can kind of like use it to see the different tools available. So you can actually see that the workflows are available as MCP tools themselves. And then I have this connect, this whole workflow, this agent workflow connected to my Claude desktop. And I can ask it to grade the student's short story exactly the same way uh, that uh, uh, I ran it from the CLI. And so the really cool thing is the agent application that I built is then exposed through, uh, through an MCP native client here. So if I just, uh, try to do this. So let's say use the student, the agent server to grade the short story, and let's run this again. The, the uh, Claude desktop will figure out that there is a different workflows that the, the MCP server for my agent exposes. It then generates the right like set of tool calls to, gen to call in order to execute that workflow. And then once it's done, it uh, basically like calls for the status of that workflow because it's happening asynchronously. And then finally, like it generates the response that the workflow produced right in here. And so you can now think about this as basically this way of doing multi-agent collaboration all through an MCP native client and also writing your own little like apps that are agent applications with built with MCP agent, but expose them as MCP servers uh, so that you can use them uh, with any MCP compatible client. Uh, the next thing that we're working on from here very, very quickly as a, as a demo is actually like, how do you deploy MCP uh, agents uh, and how do you deploy MCP servers is something that requires really deep thought about uh, evaluation, about uh, authorization, about authentication. And so we're trying to solve all of that by this, uh, this platform we're calling MCP Agent Cloud. Uh, and so you can deploy this within your own enterprise VPC, or you can actually like uh, just have like a CLI of called MCP agent deploy and get an HTTP endpoint for your agents that you can then use uh, in any kind of like MCP client, similar to you, how you integrate any MCP server. Um, so I'll pause there and I'd love to take a few questions at some point as well. We have two minutes per question. Um, there's like 41 questions, so I don't know if I'll have time to go. Uh, they're not all related to this. Uh, maybe a tricky question for you. So Google has agent to agent. Yep. You're doing MCP, I would say to an agentic network, not specifically yep. to an agent. Is that correct? That's exactly right. And, and we've actually thought about exactly that question about like, how does this relate to A2A and these other like protocols coming out? 
our fundamental premise is that the world for sure is going to be MCP night native because everybody's adopted that protocol. And there's a lot of patterns that A2A has around agent authorization, around like how agent tasks should be handed off between agents uh, that we can implement with MCP as well. And then you can like still expose them as A2A servers where necessary. But at least what we're seeing is there are many MCP clients out there already, but there aren't as many A2A uh, clients yeah. yet. So it's probably just early in that adoption curve. Uh, but our fundamental premise is like aligned with A2A that uh, agents should be exposed over some shared protocol so that you can kind of like uh, interact with them in a seamless way from any application that you want. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Samad.